Hi, and welcome to another edition of Rise Up. I'm Don Ennis. So here we are, right in the midst of summer, and my passion is to keep cool. What I'm wondering about is what's your passion? My passion? Yes. Well, I'm joining the military now, so serving the country, I would have to say. Wow, where, where are you going to be serving? Which branch? Air Force. Air Force. Yes. And do you know where you're going to go? Not yet, no. Wow. Well, I'm going to basic training in a few months. Where's that? Uh, Lackland Air Force Base, Texas. Wow. Now, do you have any military members for your family? I do. My Where's... uncle's in the Air Force. Oh, that's great. Air Force. Um, now, they're in Colorado, aren't they? The Air Force Academy? And you think about becoming an officer or are you going to be enlisted? Probably enlisted. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I see. And um, are you worried about what's happening in North Korea and things like that? A little bit. Well... <laughs> <laughs> but um, being honest. what motivated you to go into the Air Force? My uncle, I would have to say. Well, yeah. I grew up in a military community too, so. That's good. Down in Florida. Well, thank you for your service. And thank please you. come home safe. Thank you. My passion? Music. Music? And what music? What kind of music? That's a um, wide answer. Country. 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 And what, give me a song that you know that's your favorite song right now. Top of your head. Kenny Chesney. Kenny come Chesney? Over. Which? Come over. Come over. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I hope you'll be singing it in your head now. I, I am now. What are you passionate about? Passionate? Yeah. Um, sailing. Sailing? Yep. On the sound or? Yep. I race sailboats. You race sailboats. Have you ever won a race? Yep. Like what? Uh, there's the Greenport Ocean Race out of Long Island. Oh. We win that one wow. a couple years in a row. So. Have you ever capsized? No. <laughs> no? I mean, close, no. but. Okay. And how fast does racing sailboats go? The fastest we've gone is 18 knots. Which is like 20 miles an hour? Yeah, about. And what's your name? I'm Ben. Thanks, Ben. Nice to meet nice you. Nice meeting you, too. Last month, I had the honor of speaking before a rally for transgender equality. It was organized by a Berlin High School sophomore. She's cisgender. Cisgender is a word that is derived from the Latin. It basically means not transgender. And yet this young woman organized an entire rally with speakers such as myself, with high school uh, singers. Stronger, stronger, just me, myself, and I. Amazing, amazing turnout. That doesn't mean there were a lot of people there. There weren't. But you know what? The few dozen teenagers who showed up really learned something. And one of the people they learned something from is State Senator Terry Geratana. She is of District 6, which is not West Hartford. She represents Berlin, Farmington, and New Britain. And she's my guest this week. Thank I'm you very much. Delighted to be here, Thank Dawn. you so much for coming. Thank you. On such short notice, too. What I'm amazed by is that this young woman did all of this without really a lot of help. I mean, she had her family, which is great. How did you get involved? Well, uh, I got a call, I think it was a month or so ago, and I, it was from Katie saying, you know, could you come to the rally and speak? And I said, oh, absolutely. And then I looked at my schedule and I realized I had another event uh, very quickly, very soon after, within a half an hour. So I said to her, I can come and speak. I'm delighted to do so, but unfortunately I have, you know, another event to go to. Uh, but I know Kate's mother, I know Katie's mother, uh, we work together uh, politically. Uh, Rachel is former mayor of the town of Berlin and is also chair of the Democratic Party in Berlin. So, uh, uh, you know, I put two and two together and I figured, well, yeah, it's got to be uh, uh, Rachel's daughter. So. so the apple doesn't fall far from the tree in this no, family, does it? No, no. Uh, but this is the first time I've seen Katie in action. You know, I've met her before, sure. uh, her and her sister and, uh, you know, delightful uh, young women. But I hadn't uh, seen her organize something. And I think she did a wonderful job of getting the news out. She was on Facebook. She uh, had people. I talked to people who were from Vernon and uh, Tolland and, of course, yourself from West Harford as well. Yeah, there well. were flyers all over Cromwell, town. Cromwell yeah. uh, and other areas that had come come and shown up and I thought that that was great. I'll give a shout out to my daughter. My daughter met Katie through social media and yeah. was asked, hey, can you perform at my rally? And my daughter said, well, sure. And by the way, my dad's transgender. 
And Katie said, well, will she speak? And I'm like, all right, sure. What the heck? It's for a good cause. There you go. And I was very <laughs> grateful to be able to tell my story to these young people and also to Katie's grandparents, too. It was a really nice mix of people. And what's important, I think, is not how many people showed up, but what impact we had on them. Because they themselves may never have met a transgender person before. And I'd like to ask you, how many of us have you met in your lifetime? Well, I've met a few. I've met a few people who are transgender. Um, you know, uh, in my <laughs> profession, shall we say, in politics, you meet uh, people from all uh, parts of the state and uh, many people who, uh, you know, have interests, particularly in this area. Uh, I've worked with the uh, gay community, of course, and uh, you know I talked a little bit about legislation that we passed uh, way back in 2011 uh, to protect uh, individuals uh, who, uh, with gender expression and identity, we actually made them a protected class uh, in our state, which is very, very important. And I think I was talking with you, Don. I was saying how wonderful uh, Senator Beth Bay, who does represent West Hartford, she is our town rep. Yeah. In doing the Town bill. State Senator, I should say. Right. Uh, she actually uh, did the bill and spoke on the bill, and I, I sit right next to her. I'm her seatmate. What's she like? <laughs> oh, she's wonderful. She is absolutely, she is the most uh, genuinely lovely person that I know. And what have you worked on with her? Because what I want to understand is... Oh, so many issues. <laughs> what I don't think most people who are our viewers are just out there, they don't know what you guys do. You go to the big gold dome in Hartford and you muckety-muck and then you go home. But what is going on inside There's the Capitol? There's a lot of work that goes on there, let me tell you. Uh, a lot of it is in policy. Of course, we have committee meetings and so forth. And we hear from people uh, in the community who come up from all over the state and even from out of state. Uh, they come up to our committees. I'm co-chair of the Public Health Committee. So I get uh, people, uh, experts on the national level, as well as individuals who uh, come and testify before our committee and talk about the policy that our committee is considering. And not just for Berlin, New Britain, and Farmington, but no, the whole state. we represent the whole state, each one of us. Of course, we are the voice of the people of our particular districts, but we represent the state of Connecticut. When we're passing laws, whether it's the budget or uh, whether it's any sort of policy, we speak for and work for, I should say, and serve all the people of the state of Connecticut. What is the um, modus operandi in terms of how do people get your attention? Do they call you? Do they email you? Do they come up to you? Yes, they do. <laughs> they do all those things. Uh, it's important. I tell people to do that. Very often I'll meet people, you know, at a function uh, such as we had uh, last month in Berlin, and I give out my card, you know, and... Uh, I tell them, give me a call if you want to speak to me about a particular issue or, you know, whatever. But yes, people text me, people email me, people uh, contact me on Facebook. They, wh however you want to contact me is just fine. And let me tell you, I have had calls at 2.30 in the morning, calls at 5.30 in the morning. Uh, there are real early risers or people who just have burning questions. Fortunately, not so many of those, but uh, people, uh, can find us, uh, you know, if it's old school in the blue pages, we're under government. And uh, certainly on the internet, you can yeah. get in touch with us uh, in many different ways. The life of a public servant. That's right. It's 24-7, Dawn. I, I tell people it's not just that you are elected and uh, you go there and you do a little bit of something. I uh, and my colleagues work all year round. What is it that you're uh, most proud of in the session that just ended back in June? Well, um, I did a bill, and I'm very proud of it, and it was very exciting uh, in that uh, the governor signed it right away after we passed it out of the Senate. Conversion and therapy. That's exactly right. Uh, it was my committee that introduced the bill, but it was Representative Jeff Curry and Senator Beth Bayh who uh, brought the bill before us. But... Uh, uh, I, I was just very excited that it came through uh, our committee. I introduced it, and of course, Beth uh, then uh, spoke on the bill. But conversion therapy, of course, is what I would refer to as quote unquote quack medicine. Now, a lot uh, of our viewers have seen us right. talk about this before, and for those who don't know what conversion therapy is, 
why it's outlawed in now nine states. Mm -hmm. Would you explain it in layman's terms, what conversion sure. reparative therapy or sure. ex-gay therapy is? Right, um, it's very disturbing, but there are, um, sometimes I, I, I give benefit of the doubt, and I say sometimes there are parents who may be trying to struggle with their child or a loved one who is going through uh, a part of their life and trying to identify who they are. Uh, as we all know, it's not just what's on your birth certificate. And I have great empathy for these individuals who have to do this. And conversion therapy, perhaps well-intentioned parents are trying to or others are trying to find a medical solution, if you will. But uh, the medical solution, unfortunately, uh, from what I understand, uh, is supposed to be counseling. And I use that term because we have professional counselors in our state, a number of them who are licensed and certified uh, to do all kinds of uh, help in the medical practitioner uh, modality. But, but not to change people. This is not to, exactly. You cannot quote unquote change people. And I call it quack medicine because there is no data data, no science, no evidence that this works. And uh, that is why I was very excited that we banned this in our state. And no, and I can tell you, no self-respecting professional would do something like this. We had testimony from all of the different practitioners, uh, marriage and family therapists, social workers, professional counselors, who all, uh, of course, uh, spoke against this kind of concept. It's really a concept, and I think uh, beyond not being well thought out, uh, it should be le illegal everywhere. One of the things that scares me is not just the medical community, the ones who claim to be in the medical community, mm -hmm. who support conversion therapy, but there's also the backlash against um, the LGBT community in terms of the far right, and unfortunately um, most of them are Christian far right, who feel that praying away the gay is another form of this conversion therapy. Does the bill address those kinds of non-medical um, prayer interactions? Uh, no, the bill uh, does not. But anyone who would, for instance, accept money or payment. So it doesn't go as far as saying that uh, if uh, there's some sort of uh, religious aspect involved, a religion, and uh, you know within the family, that is not banned specifically. Uh, and uh, so long as, if you will, someone isn't accepting payment, it was really contingent on that. That's how you made the bill pass, right. was it made it a transaction. Right, it had to be a transaction, Got exactly. It. Is there a um, feeling that that part of conversion therapy is okay? with the state senate say, well, just because there's no transaction, as long as they're doing it in church, hey, we're not gonna get involved. Well, um, I don't know how far we can go into a church <laughs> with a, you know, there is or any house of separation worship. of church and They're state. They're supposed to be. I read about there, that. <laughs> there is, yes. We could, I, I suppose we could uh, discuss that uh, and go uh, uh, have another whole show on that. But, uh, you know, at this time, I don't think anyone's contemplating on banning that. But, okay. you know, Part of the work that I do and a lot of my colleagues do, particularly those uh, I know that I align myself with, uh, is that we take time to educate ourselves and we take time uh, to also educate our constituents and work with our constituents. And part of that is the education and the research that you do. But the biggest part is talking to people, talking to people to understand uh, where they're coming from, uh, their perspectives, and this helps us shape a lot of policy. So it's not out of the question, I'll put it that way, uh, but I think there would have to be more conversations about that before we would go down that road. I, I feel very good that, uh, uh, at least from my perspective, someone who feels that she has a good background understanding in the public health field, that uh, this uh, banning of this kind of protocol or pra practice, if you will, uh, from that perspective is not allowed in our state. You said background, so let's get some of that <laughs> figured out. What is your background? How long have you been doing this and why? Oh, wow. I've been in the legislature. I'm just completing 16 years. I was 10 years in the House. Congratulations. And thank you. And I uh, just completed my uh, third term uh, and now into my fourth term. Uh, in the state senate. Uh, I didn't serve though uh, continuously. I actually took a little hiatus 
and uh, during that time I had some family matters that had to be addressed, you know, some personal matters and so forth. And uh, But it was productive too. I actually wrote a book during that time Did you? on American art pottery. <laughs> I know something that... Is it available uh, is, on Amazon? Can oh, sure. It? Yeah, you we'll can put, get We'll it put on. a link right there on the screen <laughs> okay. so you can get her book on pottery. You can get it on Amazon. That's awesome. Uh, Santa Barbara Ceramic Designs. I'll put a little, uh, little plug in there. That's but awesome. uh, I took that hiatus and... Um, you know, it was my local Democratic Party. I always stayed in touch with my town committee and local party. Uh, continued to work and volunteer, you know, as a, a member of that uh, uh, whole Democratic family, if you will. And uh, it continued to stay in touch. And then uh, they were looking for someone to run for the state Senate seat in 2011. And, you have experience. and so there you go. And I stood up and said, yes, I'd be interested. Now, for people who are watching, who's, the whole idea of this show is for people to rise up, to do something mm -hmm. beyond just sitting. Mm -hmm. In the time we have left, please tell me, what is your advice? to people who want to do something other than yell at the TV and the internet. Oh, I know. Well, I think we all, I mutter at the TV and the internet. But uh, yes, to do something about it, the first thing is, and I know I, uh, both my uh, sons are uh, interested in policy in a variety of different ways. Uh, and I told them, I said, follow what you feel in your heart. You need to follow that passion that you have, because I know that uh, you do have that kind of passion. So whether it's environment or whether it's uh, uh, in another area, there's so many areas. Uh, right now I'm getting more and more interested in immigration and uh, the undocumented people that we do have here in our country and how to protect them. Uh, the environment goes on forever and ever. Look at the current debate on global warming and climate change. Uh, there's just so many uh, different uh, areas that people, I'm sure, feel passionate about. Even those who watch TV because they or use the internet because they may feel, gee, maybe we need net neutrality. <laughs> you know. What do you think people should do? Should they write to you? Is there a place that you recommend that people uh, look up online in terms of being active, getting activism? Sure, uh, of course. I think on Facebook, uh, anywhere on the internet nowadays, you can just go and you'll see there's so many different kinds of blogs and uh, pages for different causes, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I did it a very traditional way. I volunteered. I volunteered uh, in my party. I started off in 1968 when I was in college and I wrote uh, envelopes, addressed envelopes for uh, candidates. Uh, in the Democratic Party at that time, and then, uh, you know, got more and more interested, and I uh, volunteered for the League of Women Voters uh, and worked for them, for the League of Women Voters of Connecticut, really honed, uh, I believe, my policy skills, you know, with mm -hmm. them, uh, but there are so many different organizations and causes and anything that people can be involved in. Thank you, and they were our first <laughs> guest. The League of Women Voters was our ah. first guest here, and we're going to put some links on lifeafterdawn.com so you can find out more about the organizations we've had on before and some of the blogs that the state senator has told us about. Thank you very much. Thank you, Appreciate Dawn. it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I want to introduce you and all our viewers now to Ernest Owens, a gay journalist in Philadelphia. We met two years ago, Fourth of July weekend. It was the 50th anniversary of the first protest by gay employees who wanted to get their rights recognized. Ernest has been making changes in Philadelphia, both behind the scenes and in front of everyone. And he's here to tell us about how he's rising up. There was a lot of news and controversy surrounding this recent flag. Um, this is the new pride flag that Philadelphia has modified um, for their uh, official pride flag. As you can see, um, the traditional pride flag um, that most people see in their households and on television and pop culture has six stripes. Well, this pride flag now has eight, and it's black and brown on top, as you can see right here. Um, this flag was basically created by an organization called Tyranny, which is a local-based organization that designed the flag. And this flag um, was designed in light of a recent of the recent. Um, advocacy work and progress that was created by black and brown LGBTQ members um, in the community. So queer people of color that were black and Latinx um, and brown and, and, and whatnot, they are being commemorated in this flag as a representation of um, their work and also inclusion. 
Um, the, the pride flag motivation behind it was there was a, fi a flag raising last week um, where they basically did the official flag raising of the flag. They also explained why they did it. And it's also to speak towards an issue around inclusion in the LGBTQ community. Recently, there's been a lot of reporting and information that's been talked about pertaining to racism, um, misogynoir, and other issues that involve um, a lack of racial division in the community. Um, in Philadelphia, there's been reports of racial discrimination in bars, um, nonprofits, and also employment opportunities and social economic um, equity issues. Um, so many people in the community have, you know, fought back with protests and throughout the several months leading up to this event. And then recently, it in many ways have led to this um, change. The Office of LGBT Affairs Executive Director, Amber Hikes, um, you know, she basically helped champion for this flag to happen. It, it's now flowing outside of City Hall in Philadelphia. And it's now being in merchandise across the country. The um, campaign surrounding it is More Color, More Pride which is also being done by Tyranny. You can go on morecolormorepride.com and get more information. And it's really um, centered around a nationwide movement to basically speak about intersectionality, talk about inclusion and pride, talk about inclusion within the LGBTQ community, and be able to see this flag be able to be flown possibly in others in other cities. Philadelphia is the first city and the first major institution to modify a pride flag the general pride flag in a way that included um, racial inclusion. Previous pride flags um, have had additional colors, um, but not necessarily speaking to which uh, racial inclusion was the focus. Thank you, Ernest, and thank you for rising up. Remember, as Bruce Springsteen said, come on, rise up. We'll see you next time.